There are lots of top 10 list videos on the worst video games of all time, the worst shooters, the worst RPG, the worst kids games, okay? Bad video games get released all the time, we know that. It almost seems like there are more bad games than good ones sometimes. But every once in a while, there is a game that is just so bad that you have to wonder why was it made at all. What's up guys? Jimmy here, welcome to Chaos Top 10s, and today we are counting down the top 10 video games that never should have been made. Be it because they had a bad impact on the industry, or because they were just really, really bad, these are the games that I think we can all agree on that we could have done without. Drop a like on the video, and my notification squad show up like you guys have been doing so well with all of these top 10 videos. I truly Truly appreciate the support. Ring that bell. Get your notifications whenever I go live or whenever a new video is uploaded. And now, let's get into it. 10 games that never should have been made. At number 10, we have Aquaman Battle for Atlantis. It's not every day that your game is so bad that it spawns an award given out yearly to the worst game of the year. Seriously, X-Play used to give out a Golden Mullet Award to the worst games of the year, and it all started with Aquaman Battle for Atlantis, named after the title's character's horrible hair in the game. This is a beat-em-up, where you swim around Atlantis as Aquaman, and you beat people up. But it's really, really bad. It's buggy, it's really actually gross to look at, and there aren't even any cutscenes. You can't have a video game right now with no cutscenes. You have to read a bunch of expositional nonsense in between missions to understand what's going on. The game often referred to as the worst GameCube game ever, it was so poorly received that the planned PS2 port had to be cancelled to avoid backlash. I know, I have to be careful with this because there is a huge following for Dragon Ball. At number 9, we have Dragon Ball Evolution. You guys remember that horrible live-action Dragon Ball movie a while back? Bet you didn't know that there was a video game to go right along with it, but yes, there's a fighting game for the PSP released alongside the movie, and it was arguably even worse than the film. Really, the only good thing we can say about this game is it was the first Dragon Ball game to let you play as Bulma. But do you really want to play as Bulma when the game she's in is complete garbage? The answer, if you're a Dragon Ball fan, is probably no. The game plays almost identically to the far superior Dragon Ball Budokai series, except... The characters are modeled after their movie counterparts and all the fun has been sucked right out of the experience. Don't play the game, don't watch the movie, and if it's called Dragon Ball Evolution, you need to stay far, far away from it. At number 8, we have Superman 64. When you look at the story behind this game's development, you dig a little deeper. You really have to wonder why it wasn't cancelled up front. The game was delayed time after time and had plenty of budget cuts, yet they still decided to finish the game. Most other developers would have just thrown in the towel and canceled it as opposed to giving their fans complete garbage. But I guess when you're making a Superman game, you have to finish it. It's a shame they did too because what we got was one of the worst games of all time and pretty much exactly what you'd expect from a game with this much behind the scenes drama. The most infuriating thing about this game is that it actually made a profit. In fact, it didn't just make a profit. It was one of the best-selling games for the Nintendo 64 that year, which means a lot of people got ripped off. I guess that's what happens when you have Superman in your game title. Maybe that's why they actually finished it. Now, this title makes it on a lot of lists, and a lot of those are the worst video game lists. But why did they even make it? Why did they even let it go out to the public? At number 7, we have Duke Nukem Forever. Another example of a game that probably should have been cancelled. Duke Nukem Forever was famously in development for over 15 years and was absolutely not worth the wait. In fact, most people probably forgot it even existed by the time it was finally released. But after the 15 years of development hell, Duke Nukem Forever was released in 2011. It looks like the game has been, it looks like a game that's been stuck in development for 15 years. Seriously. The game started development on the Nintendo 64. When it came out, it was seriously outdated and just lame. I mean, the insane loading times are just the beginning of the issues with this game, but Duke Nukem Forever should have never been made, and to me, it put the nail in the Duke Nukem franchise's coffin. Here's one you may not know about. Number six, we have Mind Jack. This is a dumb game. The concept was kind of cool. 
as is the case with many of terrible games. You could take over the minds of random people and enemies to use them to your advantage in battle in a weird sci-fi future reminiscent of Robocop or Terminator. But this game was flat out terrible. It was buggy as hell, the controls were awful, the script and the voice acting were insultingly bad, and the online functions were completely stupid. Seriously, stupid. You needed to be a certain level to balance teams. Imagine in Call of Duty, if everything in multiplayer was the same. But if you were level 20 or higher, you could jump between teams at will. The online components of this game were dumb, and so was the rest of the game. The game was dumb. It should have never been made. Whoa, we've got a <laughs> we've got a frustrating one for you at number five. Rambo the video game. This game is the epitome of dumb. Take a look at it, okay, if you've never seen it. Does it look like a game that was released? What year do you think this was released? Tell me in the comment section. 2001? 1995? No. 2014. And if your answer was anything else, then uh, <laughs> you're wrong. Whose idea was it to bring Rambo out of retirement six years after his last movie to make a three hour long rail shooter with graphics that looked like they were from 2004? You really have to wonder who even thought of the game and thought it was a good idea to do. The franchise was in no way popular at the time compared to other possible movie tie-in games, but the frustrating thing, the most frustrating thing about it is it was in development for three years. Who paid money to developers for three years and then got this as their finished product. Somebody was pissed. Now you've probably heard of this one on a worst video game list. At number four, we have Ride to Hell Retribution. And Retribution got quite a bit of attention when it came out, but it was not for good reasons. Ride to Hell got a ton of attention because of how horrible it was. Bad graphics, super repetitive gameplay, buggy controls, offensive writing, and some of the worst voice acting ever recorded, and some sex scenes that were just plain weird. It's one of the few games to actually be pulled from the Steam library because it was so bad. While other games have been pulled from Steam because they were buggy or offensive, Ride to Hell was pulled because it was overwhelmingly awful. You could probably still find an Xbox copy somewhere, but why would you want to? I mean, if you did, you would just be wasting your money. Don't do it. Take my word for it. It's not the kind of bad that you can have fun with. There's games out there that are funny because they're bad. It's the kind of bad that is going to piss you off. But you know what the really scary thing about the game is? At the time of release, the developers studied they thought it had a lot of franchise potential. Of course, all developers are going to say that. And uh, there hasn't been any official statement if they think differently right now. But hopefully Ride to Hell 2 never comes out. Another game you've probably heard on a lot of worst lists. At number three, we have Rayplay. While other games on this list shouldn't have been made because they were bad, or maybe they had a negative impact on a developer's reputation, this game shouldn't have been made because it shouldn't have been made. Who was this game even made for? The game is exactly what the title suggests. You stalk a woman and her daughters before attempting to rape them. Seriously, who makes a game for that? I don't even want to meet whoever came up with the idea or whoever it was that approved it for development. Being edgy is one thing in the video game world, but this was way too far. I hate putting this on the list just because of the name, but at number two, we have every Zelda game for the CDI. You guys know how much I love Legend of Zelda, but you probably also know how much I hate the Zelda games. A lot of people think there's only one Zelda game for the Philips CDI, but that is not true. There were actually three, and they were all terrible and completely unnecessary to make. Zelda's Adventure, Link the Faces of Evil, and Zelda the Wand of Gamaliel was released in 1993 and 1994 and somehow got positive reviews from critics at the time. It had to be just because of the name. Thank God people have come to their senses in recent years as it seems that many critics and gamers have revisited these three games and modern reception for them is almost unanimously negative, as it should be. These games are horrible and they should be forgotten. They should be locked away in a time vault and never spoken about again. And I have the worst game. Let me know if you got it right. I know a lot of you like to predict what the number one is on these top tens. E.T. The Extra Terrestrial. And you probably saw this one coming. How many other video games were so bad they caused the industry to crash and have to start over and reboot from the ground up? How many other video games were so bad that it had to be buried in a desert in New Mexico? E.T. The Extra Terrestrial was released in 1982 alongside the movie for the Atari 2600. It is one of the biggest commercial failures in gaming history. And it's also cited as one of the key factors of the industry crashing 
in 1983, just a few months after its release. Just about every single aspect of this game was ripped to shreds by critics and gamers alike, and in September of 1983, less than a year after the game had been put on the shelves, Atari ordered that all unsold copies be buried in the desert in New Mexico in an effort to rid themselves of the failure. The game was actually ported to the NES in 2014 by Con Games, with a few changes including better instructions as that was one of the biggest problems with the original game, but the port didn't last long as you probably would have expected. Why would you port the worst game of all time? Are you trying to crash the industry again? There you have it my friends, 10 games that have should have never been made, period ever been made. We shouldn't even be talking about them today. I hope you guys enjoyed. There'll be a playlist below if you want to check out all the other top 10 video game list videos. And once again, thank you for all the support. Drop a like on the video and I'm looking for my notification squad in the comments. I'll see you guys on the next video.